Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Greenside Experience. We're here at our GDB, you know what I mean, custom home project here in sunshiny Glen Ellen. We've had about a week of rainy weather, but now we're dry, drying up and looking to get some exterior work finished up. But we do have a lot of custom work going on inside the house that I want to show you guys. So let's go take a look. All right guys, we're in, inside here at our GDB, you know what I mean, custom home project, and we've got our stairs going in. As you can see, it's a pretty ornate stair. We've got open risers, which means we have no wood or plane here. You can see right through. It gives us a nice modern look. Uh, sometimes when you do that though, you run into the problem, a code problem, that your gap or your spacing here is too big. You know, a child's foot could go through, they could twist their ankle or what have you. So in order to uh, avoid that, we thicken up our treads. So you'll see we have really thick four inch, four and a quarter inch treads, uh, all solid oak, all glued up. Now, some people think maybe I can just get one solid piece of wood, a, a thick piece of wood. That really doesn't exist anymore. You'd have to cut down a bunch of trees, um, dry them out and, uh, it costs a lot of money to get solid pieces of, of wood, all one piece. So all this is glued up. And there's a benefit to that. If you had one solid piece, it's going to twist, dry out, warp, crack. Whereas when you glue them up, it's glue holding it together and it's going to stay true to its size, true to its shape. So here you'll also notice our stringers. We've got exposed stringers here at the back of the stair. Now, not only are they exposed, but they're true structural stringers. They're not decorative, and I'll show you why. So this stair is basically all hung off this structural stringer right here, and that's all one piece. It's glue lambed up, glued together in the shop, so it's structurally strong. It sits inside that wall on a leg, and it sits inside this wall on a leg, and it's leg down to the deck. So that stair won't fall. The same is true with the back stringer. Then we take this set of stairs and it's basically leaned up against that stringer. And this set of stairs is hung off this stringer as well. So the entire stairwell, the entire staircases is basically hung off these two stringers. So not only do we get the cool look of an exposed open back stringer, open back stairs, but it's true structural. It's not decorative. So in addition to having glued up um, thick treads, four inch treads, our platforms are also solid glued up platforms. You'll see they're approximately four and a half, <coughs> excuse me, four and a half feet by four and a half feet. They weigh a ton. So our stair guy had a, a lot of fun carrying these things up, scribing them to fit and putting them in. But they are true structure, not decorative at all. Um, they hold up the entire platform. So we also have a nice handrail system that's going to be installed here. It gives it uh, a modern look to match the open tread look, the see-through modern stairs. It's all oak newel posts, solid oak. You see it all the points. Then our handrail is actually cut to the exact width of the post so that it can miter in and die in right in line with the posts and give as clean a look as possible without going to a full steel fabricated rail system. We will have metal spindles that sit in between here that'll offset that um, wood look like a black color and give it that cool modern look. All right guys, we're here in the master bath. And one thing I wanted to show you in here is how when you're a custom builder or building a custom home, you really have to problem solve on site because you don't always know the conditions that are going to present themselves when the designer or the architect draw up uh, a plan or a design. So here in the master shower, you see we've got an arched opening. This was one of the wishes or designs from the interior designer. It looks great, looks beautiful. They also selected a Zalige tile. I think that's how you say it, Zalige, but that's how I'm gonna say it. So the Zalige tile is a man-made tile and it's very irregular. You know, it doesn't have straight lines. It's very bumpy. It gives that old world type of look, right? It's cool, it looks great. You can see it here on the wall. But 
when we're trying to make a transition from the inside of the shower to the outside of the shower and we have these irregular tiles, it presented a little bit of a problem. So if we just had a straight, <coughs> a straight opening, it probably wouldn't be a problem. We could set these in and we could miter the tiles and have a you know, somewhat straight joint since it's an irregular tile. But when we come up to the arch and these tiles are staying in their horizontal line and the tiles on the arch start to angle off, well now your grout lines aren't gonna line up. There's no way a tile guy is going to be able to miter these and, and fit and match. So that created a problem. So we had to problem solve basically. And what we came up with here, which I thought was a good idea, is essentially we're gonna put casing on this opening just as if it was a door or a cased opening. But the casing is not gonna be wood, it's gonna be stone. It's gonna be stone that matches the floating bench and matches the countertops. So essentially that casing is gonna go on the inside and the outside of the opening. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that casing, imagine this is a piece of casing, and we're gonna extend past the opening about an inch to seven eighths, right? on both sides. Now that leaves us with a little cavity on the inside of the jam, right? Like this, and you can see here how we've marked out. Now we're gonna take our tiles and we're gonna fill in that gap. And because, you know, they're a narrow tile, it allows us to make that curve and look very intentional, to quote Nick Schiffer, very intentional design across the opening. It looks neat and tidy on the inside, neat and tidy on the outside, and in here and out. We're also going to install an arched glass door. So we need this plane to be pretty accurate, pretty smooth, so that when the glass fits in here, you're not going to get any big irregular um, openings or, or voids in the seal. We're here, we're in the trim stage. You know, green side design build, we're all about the solid poplar. So every one of our houses, we custom mill our own trim, custom profiles, basically the designer draws it or the client draws it and we can shape it, mill it and produce it. So that's what we have going on here, custom profile casing and base. Here you see we've got a window trim. We've got a flat poplar, solid poplar mullion strip adjoining these three windows. We got a sill and apron. Some people call this a stool and apron. I'm gonna call it a sill and apron. Uh, with basically the casing turned upside down, turned in itself. This is solid poplar as well, it's primed. When our uh, trimmer, or sorry, our painter comes in, he'll prime all this raw wood um, and then get two coats of paint. There's one other thing I wanna show you when you're custom building and you have a really good trim carpenter, they make little adjustments without even telling you as a builder, um, even though as a former carpenter, we definitely notice these things. But a good trim carpenter will always make adjustments to make the final product look good. Now, if you look at this window, you see the trim around it, it looks the same as every other window in the house, but actually it's not. If you come over here and see the width of this casing, it's actually narrower than the standard casing. So what he did is actually ripped. This is a, an easier profile to do this. If you had a profile with maybe some more lines and more curves, it might be a little bit harder to reduce it, but it has been done. But he essentially reduced the width of the casing, keeping the same exterior profile, and kept it all around, all three sides. Actually, all, all three sides, because the bottom is the standard. But this is something that the average person probably would not notice, but you would notice if they took this casing and just ripped the back off of it to fit it in here, right? You wouldn't have this profile on here. So they ripped it from the inside to give it the same look. It's just a little bit narrower, but nobody really notices. So carpenters are obviously working in the house here. They're setting pocket doors right now. So one of the things that is required on the pocket door is a little kerf at the bottom of the door. I don't know if you can see this little line here. It's a kerf in the door. So you can see our good trim carpenter, he's made a jig on his router, right? If you have to do it more than once, create a jig. Who says that? Jamie Verdura. So essentially he sets this on and runs it through the bottom, the router, and creates that. He's got a jig set up, so every door he uses, 
or every door he hangs, he uses this to route out the bottom. And then over here, here's a finished product. It's not, doesn't have the jam installed yet. Soft close. Again, we use HD pocket door frames. The soft close is the best. You can see, we got an LVL header that comes installed with the, the track. A lot of times guys will buy the cheap lumber yard pocket door frames and trim carpenters hate those. So I'm down in the basement here. We're prepping our concrete floor for LVT. We've got some wide plank LVT, uh, which is a great product. It's waterproof, not just water resistant, waterproof, uh, great for basements, uh, durable. But what I wanted to show you down here is if you see the floor is a little discolored, there's a reason for that. So before we started uh, getting prepped for the LVT, we checked the floors for level. You know, a good contractor, a good flooring contractor will always check that first. So he came down here, he checked it, he said, Mike, we have to put the brakes on. Our floor is a little out of level. So this is a poured concrete floor. I've never seen a concrete floor poured perfect anywhere. You can get really good floors. They might have an eighth of an inch difference in a eight or 10 foot span. That's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. Well, we had some unlevel concrete floors here and we had to address that before we put the flooring down. So you can see, I took this area and that area and we filled it with lightweight a thin layer of lightweight concrete that, are, that self levels, it's self leveling concrete. You'll notice the blue, that's primer. It's very important you have to put the primer down on this floor, on a concrete floor, before you put the lightweight on or the uh, self leveling concrete on because if you don't, it's so thin, the layer is so thin to level the floor, it'll flake off. And we don't want that to happen, we want it to stick. So that's just one of the things we have to do to make, make sure we have a dead flat floor for our floor guys. Is it ideal? Do we like when this happens? No, but it's, it's part of the game. It's part of the business. And for all you young builders out there, when you have a concrete floor, you should always check it for level after your concrete guy is done. Even the best concrete guy in the world, you know, he can't keep, he can't keep an eye on every single one of his, his guys at all times. Another thing I want to show you in this house, as you've seen in <clears throat> a number of our Greenside videos, is we have a golf simulator room. It's sunken down below the normal level of the basement, about two feet, two and a half feet, and gives us a high ceiling to swing those golf clubs. This one actually comes in through a bar. So there'll be a bar set up here, a viewing area there where the cameraman is. <clears throat> you walk down here, screen will be set in there. <clears throat> and then you just start swinging your club this way. So it's a really nice setup. This is off to one side of the house. It keeps it quiet. Um, just a really cool setup. I'm surrounded in a sea of trim here. It's poplar, baseboard, casing, all kinds of stuff. But that's going to conclude the video for today. Thank you for watching. We'll get you back into this house when more of the details are installed and finished uh, to show you some more, pretty, some more cool stuff. As always, a big thank you to Anderson Windows, a sponsor of uh, the Greenside Experience. And if you like this video, comment, like, and subscribe. I think that's how you say it. We'll see you next time.